From the short story by Langston Hughes. I'm Cora. She lives in a world where she has no voice. Once you're colored, child, it's always colored. Powerless to protect the people around her. You scared us all to death. But through the love of another woman's child, she finds the strength to make a stand. I want to say something. Exxon Mobile Masterpiece Theater's American Collection presents Cora Unashamed. Funding for American Collection comes from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Exxon Mobil Corporation, and viewers like you, partners in honoring the best of American literature and drama. Come out of white and colored love, Cora. <laughs> My baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we don't care what anyone says. We don't care at oh. all. <laughs> She's so beautiful, Cora. What are you going to name her? Miss Josephine, you may proceed. Be careful, Josie. Not right now, honey. I want to help you. Come. Remember? Shh. Sit nice and quietly. The little mermaid. Once upon a time, there was a lovely young girl who lived far down beneath the o o ocean. Ocean. 
One day she saw a handsome prince and my biscuits. Oh, Jesse! Hello, Jesse. Good morning. Oh, hello, Priscilla. Mm, Priscilla looks very grumpy this morning. Oh, she didn't like getting up this morning, did she? And what do you two ladies want to do today? Cora, this laundry needs to be finished today. Please, Cora. Why, good morning, Josephine. Morning, Mrs. Studebaugh. Uh, my mother's arthritis has been acting up again. Uh, Mrs. Student, would it be all right if I started bringing Josie three times a week from now on instead of only once? Well, I'm sure Josephine knows that her mother has lots of work to do. You won't be in the way, will you, Josie? All right, Cora. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Art's handkerchiefs. Mr. Eddie's sausages. Oh, poor old Mr. Eddie. He hasn't had a square meal since his wife died. Jesse, do you want Mother to put castor oil on that thumb? Arthur, Mary, breakfast! Jesse, hurry up. Come on! Hello, Jesse! How's my girl? Jesse, will you please get down? You're creasing your father's shirt. Arthur, are you going somewhere? Go up past the biscuits, will you? Going, Elizabeth. It's the first month. Oh, time does fly, so. I've got to pick up the new orders. The Maytag. It's arrived. Mm -hmm. And you, Mrs. Studebent, will be first lady in the town of Melton to own a washing machine. Oh, Arthur! I am so excited. Did you hear that, Cora? The Maytag's coming. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I can't wait. Straight backs, please, girls. Art, am I imagining it? Or is Muriel rather full of herself since she was made president of the Women's Club? You're imagining it, dear. You'll get your turn to be president one day, Lizzie. You'll see. Mary? Are you still running to school with Mr. Art today? Yes, Cora. Better finish up then. These biscuits are excellent, Cora. Mm, too salty for my liking. The biscuits aren't salty, Mama. I know that, Jesse. I'll be leaving right after breakfast, Mary. Jesse, what did Papa say about wasting food? There are people starving the world over. Correct me if I'm wrong, Arthur. Cora? Yes, Mrs. Tudor. Read your book. Mama's going to save you a nice piece of sausage. A Maytag? Cora will be the first one to town to have a brand new Maytag. I don't know where we're going to put a washing machine, Mrs. Student. There's no room in here. Well, maybe we can make a space. I don't think so. Oh. Oh, I meant to remind you to pick up those buckles Mr. Art ordered from Garlinger's. And while you're in town, will you please pick up a copy of the new McCall's magazine? Yes, ma'am. Josie, Josie will be out in a bit. Mother says she can't get up from the table until she's eaten every morsel. <laughs> Bye, Cora. Bye, Mary. Morsel. Morsel. So, Mama, you love words, don't you? Always asking what this means, what that means. Morsel means a little itty bit. 
You know what? I think you're going to be a writer. Yes, a writer when you grow up. Didn't you want to be a writer, Mama? Oh, I left school before I could think of what I wanted to be. I had to work. I want to go to school. You are going to school. In the fall. You're going with Jesse. Won't that be fun? Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, Kawa. Bye, Willie. Hi, Doctor. Say bye, Willie. How are you? Oh, you Bye, Doctor Siebel. You need to tell Doctor Siebel something. Are you eating all your vegetables? Yes, Doctor Siebel. Good. You know why you should eat your carrots? So you can see in the dark. <laughs> Isn't that right, Corn? Huh? See? Ooh. Are you taking your medicine, Josie? Yes, Dr. Siebel. Good. How's your mother doing, Cora? Did the pills help at all? The pills do help some doctor, but with all the ironing, it's hard on her. That's too bad. Well, with your pa gone, at least she has you to look after. She is a lucky woman. Corey, bye-bye, girls. Bye, Dr. Siebel. Bye, Dr. Siebel. These beans look like a big old worm been at them. If your granddaddy Jenkins were alive, we'd know what to do about this. Always made things right. I'm gonna go sit over there a minute. Go fetch your grandma a glass of water. Mama, grandma's sick. Mama? Mama, are you all right? I'm all right. Ooh! Got to bring my cane again over there. Ah! It went out. Ah, oh, better. Have we lived here forever, Grandma? <laughs> sure seemed like we did. Now, um, 30 years since your grandpa and me come up to Melton from Mississippi and met their cart. <laughs> your grandpa and me, we were the onlyest colored folk ever to settle here in Melton. Onlyest colored folk ever. And Mr. Sturdivant and what were Jesse's grandpa, Mr. Art's father. Oh, he's real kind to us. Gave Grandpa a job hauling ashes for the town. Bought this house hauling ashes. Raised the children hauling ashes. Educated them hauling ashes. A few years ago, Luther just laid down and died. I guess his body was all wore out from hauling ashes and raising kids. Now there ain't nobody left here but us three women. All my children done left. There is no work for color for us here, Mama. You know that. When the good Lord come to take me, ain't nobody going to know. I'll tell him, Mama. How you gonna tell him? We don't even know where they is. We know where Harriet is. <laughs> and she run off in the middle of the night, didn't tell nobody where she was going. And how's she gonna stay here? She wasn't a keep quiet type of person. What she thought, she said. No color girl would get away with that here in Melton. Are we still colored, Grandma? Now you are the funniest little thing. 
still colored? Of course we still colored. Once you're colored, child, it's always colored. Fields. I will see you where the bluegrass grows. I will hear you when I listen as the soft wind blows. I will see you in the moonlight. I will see you in every star. I will see you wherever I wander, no matter how far. And I will keep looking. And I will keep listening. And I will keep remembering long after the days have gone that our love, my dearest, will always live on. That was beautiful, Joe. I wrote it for you, Cora. Mama, Mama, you can play with me. Of course I will, Josie. <laughs> I want you to know that I will always love you. Because our love has no time, no space. It just continues on and on. I love you, Cora. I love you too, Joe. I'm all right, honey. I was just remembering. washing machine, Mrs. Studebent. It takes much too long. But I thought... I can do it fast by hand. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Jesse, what do you think you're doing? Look at what you have done to your dress. How many times have I told you you don't play with mine in your best dress? No more playing with Josie today. Colored man in this here white people's cemetery. But I'll be coming soon. Your time is not coming, Mama. You're still young. <coughs> I know it. My time's coming soon.
Cora, you won't forget about my cakes for the meeting. Uh, no, ma'am. And has your mother finished ironing the flats? It seems like she's taken forever. Yes, ma'am. Cora, how long has Josephine had that cough? Does she have a fever? Uh, yes, she does. I think I better get her home. Yes. This might be catching. We don't want Jesse getting sick, too. No. I want you to take this and give her one teaspoon every hour. Dr. Siebel swears by it. Shall I call him? Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. He's already given me something for her. I'll bake those cakes at home. Are you sure? Thank you. One chocolate and one lemon. Lord, that's all I'm short of. You getting sick, too. Dear sweet Josie, walk with God. Rest in peace. Amen. The Lord never gives us more than we can handle, Cora. If you need anything at all, don't hesitate to come to me. Thank you, Reverend. Would you take my mother home, please? No, Cora, let me stay with you, girl. Mama. Of course, of course. The 
Mrs. Jenkins. Tim, you go. You had no right. You took her and she was mine. You took my baby. Mine. My baby. I never asked you for anything in my whole life. You wouldn't let me keep Joe, and then you took my Josie, and she was mine. Mine! God damn it, mine! God damn you! God damn you to hell. I just don't know what to say. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. I'll leave you to carry on then. shipment of cop tea kettles coming in today all the way from the Orient. Oh, will we get one too, Arthur? You've been in my thoughts and prayers every day, Cora. Thank you, Mr. Please boil up some chicken broth for Mrs. Strober. She's sick as a dog with the flu. It's very hot. Oh, thank you. Well, I think I'll go over there and see if there's anything else she needs. Can I go with you, Mama? Mother's busy. Just you can stay here with me. Well, mind you don't be a nuisance.
place where Josephine's gone. Is it far? Mother says Josephine's in heaven. Will I go there too? Of course you will, Jesse. When? Not until you're very, very old. Josephine wasn't old, Cora. There was a little mermaid who lived far beneath the ocean. Her skin was as delicate as a rose petal, her eyes as blue as the deepest sea. Let me see. She didn't have freckles, did she, Cora? She had blue eyes, just like yours, as blue as the deepest sea. One day, she saw a handsome prince. You're Jesse, and I love you. After Josie died, I thought my heart was empty and out of love. I didn't want to feel anything again. But you made me feel again. I love you, Jesse. by the time this art gets home in. <laughs> Three young rats with black felt hats. Three young ducks with new straw hats. That's about the mother-daughter banquet. Oh, Out with two young pigs in satin vests and sorrel wigs. But suddenly... But suddenly it... They all went... 
Jesse, I think you should begin again, don't you? Three young rats with black felt hats. Three young rats. <sighs> Try again. Try again, Jesse. Three young. Jesse, why don't we go to the kitchen and practice? Jesse? Elizabeth. I said begin again. Uh, Elizabeth, let her be. I just don't understand you, Arthur. Here I am trying to do the best for our child, and you won't let me. Jesse, she's doing the best she can. I just don't want her to make a fool of herself, that's all. You mustn't worry so much. She'll be fine. You're not angry with me, are you? Oh, Lizzie. I don't have it in me to be angry with you. I think I'll go and lie down. She embarrassed me in front of the entire women's club. Nobody cares if it wasn't perfect. I care, Arthur. I have standards, even if no one else around here does. Oh, for heaven's sake. It's a ridiculous poem anyway. And those freckles are first. The only thing I prayed for when I was pregnant was that she wouldn't have freckles. Lisbeth, that is not fair! I am so ashamed of her. Jesse? 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 above the words where they can't hurt you. That way there's nothing anyone, not anyone, can say to bruise your soul. You gotta move yourself away. Rise up like a cloud and drift away. Leave the words behind where they can't ever hurt you. Thank you, Cora. You scared us all to death. And there we were all chasing around town looking for you, and you didn't think to tell us where you'd gone. Now, I want you to march straight up to your room, young lady. And don't you ever, ever pull another stunt like that again. Do you hear me, Jesse Sudebaum? Cora, Jessie will be spending the evening in her room uh, without food. She hasn't had anything to eat since lunchtime, ma'am. 
Is this really necessary, Elizabeth? Jesse has to learn that there are certain things that are not acceptable in this house. Correct me if I'm wrong, Arthur. Pass the butter, Mary, please. Where are you going, Arthur? It's Thursday. My deacon's meeting. It was wrong, Mr. Art. Jessie did the best she could. She did the best she could. She cares more about these things than I do, Cora. Go, so will you help me, Mary, please? I'll try. Oh. <laughs> Mary. Hello, Mother. We hardly ever see you, dear. Well, this school is short-staffed, Mother. Did you hear about Doris Archer? She's marrying an attorney. Me the student's order. Hello, Mr. Metsoulis. Cora. Oh, what's this? Uh, blackberry ice cream. It's our newest one. Jesse likes it. Oh. Thank you, Willie. I'll see that she gets it. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, Jess, it's perfect. It suits you much better than it ever suited me. You look beautiful, Jessie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's him. Here, let's see your hair. <laughs> Hurry. Oh, that flower's perfect, too. Disappear. Good evening, Willie. Come in, son. Jesse will be right down. Good evening, sir. Elizabeth, look what Mrs. Matsoulis made for us. It's a uh, Greek specialty, a core of beauties, right, Willie? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mrs. Studevent. Good evening, Willie. That was very nice of her. Hello, Willie. Hi, Jesse.
you young people have a dance to go to? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's go. Have a good time now. Thank you. I'll make sure she's home by now. All right. Don't they look lovely? Yes. Willie's a very nice boy. He is. He's a good kid. You got to hand it to those Matsulises. They came here with nothing, and look at them now. Yes, Jeff. Look at them. Their son is dating our daughter. Ten years ago, I wouldn't have had him in the house. That's called progress, my dear. My father would have called it the lowering of standards. I'll make the coffee. I'll go help Cora. Now we have an ice cream maker. What is the matter with these girls? I can remember your father saying exactly the same thing. He thought a doctor's daughter could do better than... What did he call me? The son of a backcountry store owner. Until you assured him that you were studying to be an accountant and that we would be living in Iowa City. My father died. I couldn't let the business go, was my... You could have, but you didn't want to. What I wanted didn't matter. I believe I've done my best to make that up to you. I don't think you have wanted for anything. Did you know right away, Cora? First time you saw him? Could you feel it right in here? Not the first moment. Joe. You're not from Melton. Uh, I just come in from California, working at Garlinger's livery stable. <laughs> it was his eyes. The way he smiled with his eyes. I couldn't resist him. <laughs> like Willie. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, no! <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Come on! Isn't this incredible? This is so beautiful. How'd you find this place? <gasps> Cora and I used to come here every spring. We'd take tons of blackberries and we'd make blackberry everything blackberry jams blackberry jellies blackberry scones blackberry muffins oh <laughs> my mom makes me wear it because of my freckles It shouldn't matter that he's Greek, Jesse. He's a nice, kind boy. 
He doesn't mind that I'm not smart. He loves me just the way I am. And he's handsome, too. Oh, he is. <laughs> I don't want to go away to school, Cora. I just want to stay here. You know your mother has her heart set on normal college for you when you graduate. Jesse, Coming, mother! Will you tell her I got an F on my Latin test, Cora? I, I tried my hardest. It's the words just won't go in. Jesse, hurry up. My zip is stuck. Well, you won't forget to tell her? Of course not, but not today. Today's your mother's special day. Don't forget. Congratulations, Madam President. So your prophecy finally came true. Well, I always knew you'd do it. Really? Of course. I am so proud of you. Twenty-six years passed by in a flash, hasn't it? Oh, I know, I know, it hasn't always been easy, Lizzie. But I do so love you. Dance with me. Oh, like we used to. Just like we used to. I wish you weren't going away, Willie. How am I going to live without you? It's not forever. It's only a month. When we're married, we'll be together forever. I'll work in the store, stay with my parents. We'll have children and a home of our own. Then we'll love each other forever. Yes. Forever. Promise me, Willie. Forever. Your grandma almost got my last nerve last night. I made her some soup. She said it needs a pinch of something, a little pinch of something. So I pinched and pinched. She said, no, that's not it. That's not it. She starts pinching, putting stuff in my soup. She finally says, oh, I'm not hungry. <laughs> you love your grandpa. I hope you two have some good conversations. My baby. My baby. Bye, Papa. 
put Jesse? Lemon custard, just for you. No, oh, thanks, Cora. No. I've never known you to turn down lemon custard. Want some iced tea? Jesse? Jesse? Are you all right? I'm pregnant, Cora. Willie's gone away and I'm pregnant. <laughs> Jesse, do you love Willie? Yes, I do. More than anything, all we want is to get married. And I want to have my baby, Cora. Of course you do. When you love someone so much, of course you want your baby. What will Mother say? I don't know, Jessie. But you're a grown woman now, and you must tell your mother what you want. Oh no, Cora, please, won't you tell her? Cora, please? Please, Cora! All right. I'll tell her. Aren't these red roses dramatic? Mrs. Studeman, Jess is not feeling too good. It's just something she ate. No, it's not that. Mm -hmm. No, ma'am, it's something else. Jessie's going to have a baby. She's two months gone. Willie Matsoulis is the daddy. At the moment, he's in Chicago helping his uncle. Oh. But Jessie wants to tell him when he gets back. Jessie and Willie love each other very much, ma'am. What does Jessie know about love? Why can't they just get married? That's what Jesse wants. No daughter of mine is going to marry a foreigner, for goodness sake. He's got her into trouble. It's no trouble having a baby that you want. You're a fine one to talk, aren't you? Josephine, what's no trouble to me, Mrs. Student? How dare you? What am I supposed to say, Jesse? Jesse won't be going to normal college after all because she's pregnant. The Greek boy is the father. Is that what I'm supposed to tell everyone? Well, I thought we could get married. How will marriage solve any of this? He's a Greek. Who sells ice cream? about all of your hopes and dreams? All of the things you want to do with your life? He's all I want, Mother. No. No, he is not, Jesse. Folks like that, they just ain't never satisfied. Now, she likes her collars up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember when Mr. Art bought a head to meet his folks, when they were first engaged. 
We all see that, but not Mr. R. <laughs> he loved that woman like he got a sickness. Wouldn't listen to nothing about her. Hmm. Well, you reaps what you sows, that's what I say. You reaps what you sows. Need some air, Mama. Going outside. In this weather? You must like horses. The livery stable. Oh. No, I don't particularly. I just needed the job. It's a long way to come for a job you don't particularly like. Huh. Have you ever heard of the IWW? It's industrial workers of the world. I'm one of them. Government doesn't like us much. They call us communists, reds. Throw us in jail every chance they get. That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, Cora, Cora, I've told you all of my secrets. How about you tell me yours? Don't have any secrets. Yes, you do girl with fire in her eyes like yours has plenty of secrets. Cora. Getting cold, girl. Come on back inside. Her. Elizabeth, I came as quickly as I could. I brought the migraine powder. How are you feeling? It's very kind of you, Walter, but it's not that. Jesse and I are taking a trip. You'll need to help her pack. He's a good boy, Mrs. Studeman. Just let them get married. Mr. Art would if he knew. We're going to Kansas City. And we're going shopping. I'm wondering if this will be enough. I'll put in some extra underwear, an extra sweater, too. Mother says I've disgraced the family. No. You have not disgraced anyone, Jessie. She thinks we need to go away and have a talk about it. You think she might listen to me, Cora? I hope so, honey. You take care of yourself while you're away. You hear me? Cora's going to be thinking about you every moment. Remember that. Every moment.
What will I be when I grow up, Cora? I think you're going to be a mother. Shall I call Dr. Siebel's, Elizabeth? Oh, no, no, no. She'll be fine. Just an attack of indigestion. The food was so rich, I could barely tolerate it. Come on, she Jeff. looks so pale. Oh, Cora, there you are. Uh, give Mr. DeBoer a hand with the suitcases, will you? We went to every lady shop in Kansas City. Oh, we had such a wonderful time. Muriel, I can't wait to show you what we bought. Tom, just leave those things there. Cora, will you get the rest of the packages so the DeBoards can be on their way? Tom, Muriel, thank you so much. No trouble. Muriel, I'll see you at the meeting. See you then. I think she'll be all right. I'm sure she'll be. Oh, is that for Jesse? I'll take it. I'll just get the bags then. I'll manage. You may go home early. I'd just like to say goodbye to Jesse. Not now, Cora. I raised Jesse. I'm the one that's taken care of her since she was a baby. Miss Student's got no right to keep me from seeing her. Are you wasting your time exciting yourself? Won't do no good, Cora. Won't do no good at all. That woman's hard to figure. She got something inside aggravating her soul. Myself, I ain't got no time for her except that little bit of money she give me for the ironing. How long you been with her? More than half my life. Mm -hmm. Cora, they don't care nothing about you. Only thing you expected to do is work and grin. Students upstairs with Jesse. They came back from a shopping trip a week ago. Shopping trip? They went to Kansas City. Seems like Jesse got sick while she was there. Mrs. Student says it was something she ate. Oh. Um. I think you should call Dr. Siebel's, Mr. Art. Mrs. Student won't hear of it, but I think you should. journey was tiring. Well, I think we should call Walter. No. I mean, yes, but Jessie's never been strong. That child's been a worry to me from the day she was born. Now, I want to hear all about your trip. Did you get the order for those new acorn gas ranges? <sighs> Arthur? Good morning, Cora. Dr. Siebel's. I'm so glad you came. Has uh, Jessie eaten anything at all yet today? No, she hasn't. She's in her room. Oh, Walter. Morning, Elizabeth. I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, Arthur asked me to drop by. He called you? Yes, he did. He said he would meet me here at 10. But no matter. Cora can show me up. Uh, no, I'll, uh, I'll do it. Cora, will you take these down to the basement, please? If there's anything that you need, doctor, you just call me and I'll be right up. Thank you, Cora. I'll do that.
She has a bacterial infection. It seems to have originated in the, uh, the pelvic area. This is a woman's problem, Arthur. Oh. Oh, I see. When is she going to get better? The best thing for Jesse is rest and quiet. It's the spirit that needs to heal, Elizabeth. The body will follow. I'll drop back by in a couple of days. Isn't, isn't there something else we should do? Love and understanding. That's what she needs more than anything now, Arthur. Love and understanding. I'll see myself out. Dr. Siebel says plenty of fluids. Shall we try some peppermint tea? Our maid, Margaret, used to give it to us when we were feeling bilious. Margaret hugged me and kissed me and fed me. Peppermint tea, teaspoon by teaspoon. And it worked. I felt better. Jesse doesn't like peppermint tea. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's not right that she's not eating or drinking, Mr. Art. If I bring it to her, she'll eat. All right, Dr. Siebel says she must have complete rest and quiet if she is to recover her health. We only want what's best for our daughter. Isn't that right, Arthur? It's only a slight infection. Those were Walter's very... Elizabeth, you don't have to bear this burden alone. Let Cora help you. She won't upset Jesse. You, you know how close they are. This can only be a good thing. She is my child, and I'll look after her myself. Mr. Studefendt. Mr. Studevant. a moment's notice. You know I have my committee meeting. The bank needs both our signatures. I would have handled it myself. I'll get you back to your meeting by two.
he loves me, Cora. I know he does. my decision, the entire committee agreed. The Matsoulises are good people. They don't deserve this. I hope you don't regret it, Elizabeth. I've done what I know is right. Good evening, Mrs. Studevant. I just got back. I heard Jesse was sick. How dare you show your face here? Don't you ever come to this house again. Jesse was sick, so I went straight over there. Mrs. Studevant wouldn't even speak to me, Cora. What's going on? Jesse's very ill, Willie. She was pregnant. She was going to tell you when you got back. Pregnant? Yes, but not anymore. Her mother took it to Kansas City. Did you really want to marry her, Willie? Of course I did, Cora. Never gonna let me see her again. I know it. I've got to find a way to see her, Cora. How can I see her? I'll do what I can. Cora? Tell Jesse I love her. Please. Why can't they just get married? He loves her. <laughs> and he wanna marry her. He's the right nice boy, too. <laughs> Ain't nothing to stop him, both the children is white. Sometimes even being white isn't good enough, Mama. Oh, now, now, that white boy you was with, he... Joe, Mama. Joe. That white boy had a name. He was Josephine's daddy. And I loved him. Will you run up to Cameron's, please, Cora? Dr. Siebel's coming by and he needs some carbolic soap.
Clint's already left. I'm not welcome here anymore, Cora. I would have married her. If only they would have let me. What about Jesse? I'll come back for her. As soon as I can. I will come back for her. Bye, Cora. I've always tried to do what I believed was best, Cora. That served me well in the past. But the truth is, man is a weak, fallible creature. What do we do now? Yeah, you stay with Jesse tonight, Cora. Hmm?
Is it far? When you love someone, they're never far away because they're always with you. That's because love has no time or space. It just continues on forever. I will see you in the cornfields. I will see you where the green grass grows. I will hear you when I listen. Wherever the soft wind blows. I will see you in the moonlight. I will see you in every star. I will see you wherever I wander, no matter how far. And I will keep listening. And I will keep looking. And I will keep remembering long after the days are gone. For our love, my dearest. We'll always live on. Horrors here, Jesse. Horrors here, Jesse. Do not ask to be set free from sorrows, pain, and care, but to accept what the Lord ordains as right and good and part of his eternal plan. Let us bow our heads and pray. I want to say something. Cora? You preach your pretty sermons, but you don't say nothing. You sing your pretty songs, and you don't say nothing. Jesse's gone. She's gone. You're gone. Nobody cared enough. Nobody said enough. Nobody loved you enough. Well, Cora's here, Jesse. And I'm going to tell them what really happened. I'm going to tell them what they did to you in Kansas City. I told her that you loved your baby. I told her that you wanted to keep it. But she didn't care what you wanted. Cora. They killed your baby before it was born. She killed your baby and you. You Name. killed stop. Cora, her. stop, please. You killed Cora. Her. Help me. You Tom, killed help, her. help me. You me. Killed you killed her. Her. You Cora, please. They killed her. Arthur. Arthur. Leave Cora alone.
To learn more about Langston Hughes and the Harlem Renaissance, visit the American Collection online at pbs.org. Funding for American Collection comes from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the ExxonMobil Corporation, and viewers like you.